Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd. And this is the April 2012 virtual user group meeting for Tab 3 and Practice Master users that we affectionately call the Water Cool Apps. <laughs> You ever feel like that? My daughter brought me this when her senior class went to Disney World. Now, one of my clients down in Indy has an easy button. I'm sure a lot of offices have these. You get them from Office Max or Office Depot. I can't remember which one. <laughs> I'm wrong, Staples. <laughs> and, uh, and I like to press the easy button, but a lot of times I'm not feeling like that was easy. I'm feeling just a little bit frustrated. And so one of the topics today is going to be help in Practice Master and Tabs and all of the STI software help to get your uh, answers to whatever questions you're having. Now, granted, you can't answer every question by pressing the help button, but there's a lot of stuff in there. We have a, a guy who's just started working with us. His name's Dan, and he likes to complain about everything. And yet, even Dan admits that the help is the best help that he's ever seen in the world, doesn't have a single complaint. So if it satisfies Dan, it should satisfy just about everybody. Mary Jo, on the other hand, is going to talk about the statement layout designer. We're going to look at, oh, adding an image. Maybe you have a pen and ink drawing of your building. Maybe you have a logo. Uh, maybe you've just taken an image or a snapshot, if you will, of your um, letterhead and want to get it into your statements. We'll talk about how to do that. But before we do that, a little bit of house cleaning, housekeeping, whatever you call it. Um, you should have a little bar or um, part of your screen taken up by a box like this uh, over on the right. This is your control panel for GoToWebinar. Off to the left, there is a little uh, set of buttons that shuts off. If you don't see anything but these buttons, then you're in the state that I'm about to describe, because one of the buttons that juts off to the left is one that looks like arrows pointing to the right. And if you click that, this big box will go out of the way, and all you'll see are these little buttons. If you do click that, and it is out of the way, then this button will turn into one where the arrows point to the left. And clicking that button will bring this back into focus, so that you can type a question. Um, if, you're, you, if you have a question, you may interrupt us at any time. We may not acknowledge you right away, but you can raise your hand or type a question here. So if you're shy, type a question here. If you're not shy, click this button, which looks like a hand with an arrow pointed upwards in front of it, and that will raise your hand, and Leanne will unmute you and call on you and let you ask a question. We'll make sure you get your question answered, and then we'll mute you back up and go back to talking about what we were talking about. So don't hesitate to ask questions. If you think of questions after the fact, you can always send a, an email to paul.purdue, like the school, not the chicken, P-U-R-D-U-E, paul.purdue at attorneycomputersystems.com. We do have people working around the clock, Dan's one of them, by the way, trying to come up with longer domain names, but right now attorneycomputersystems.com is all we have. Now, today, help. Here we are. We're in Practice Master, apparently. And we are looking at Scooby-Doo Incorporated. And we have a question. So what do we do? Well, I know a lot of you would just pick up the phone and call 1-800-475-8104 and ask for Mary Jo or me, which is fine. But a lot of times, if it's just a simple question, you might get your answer right here. Let's say, for instance, that you're in the fee screen and you're going to add a fee. And you want to know what this phase task activity that you see here is. What is that? What does that mean? Well, one of the ways you can get help in Practice Master or Tabs or Accounts Payable or General Ledger or Trust Accounting or any STI software is with this yellow question mark. Now, your first question is, what's the difference between this yellow question mark and this yellow question mark? We don't know. Don't ask that question because there's no good answer for that, OK? Now, I can tell you that the reason that this yellow question mark appears here is because on the, well, no, OK, I lied. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. We don't know why they both appear here. We don't know of any differences between them. So choose one. If you like the big one, click it. If you like the little one, click it. But when you do, you will get a screen in help that shows you information specific to where you are. We call that context-sensitive help. We are in the fee file, so we quick, 
click the uh, yellow question mark, and there we are. We're in the help section specific to the fee file. Now, when you're in help, you have two things you can see. This is your kind of table of contents or whatever other tab you're on. We'll go into that in a second. And this is the actual help screen. Now, you'll notice when you are in a help section, there are certain bits of text that appear just like hyperlinks would appear in a web document or on a website. Now, you'll notice also that some of them are underlined with dashes and some of them are underlined solid. Anything that's underlined in dashes, when you click it, will pull up a very simple definition. So if you don't know what a timekeeper is and you click that, it'll pull up a definition of the word timekeeper as it pertains to tabs and practice master. On the other hand, anything that's underlined solid is going to take you actually to a separate help page. Okay? And these buttons here operate just like they would in a browser. If you want to go back to where you were, oh, I lied, these buttons operate just like they would in the browser. So if we want to go back to the fee file and then click perhaps on billing system lookup file and then go back to the fee file and then perhaps click on client ID field type and then go back to the fee file, these move us around, move us back to the page we were previously on. Now, if we do happen to be looking at a whole section, we're reading all about fee files, and we started at the first topic, and we want to keep going through them, these buttons here take us from one topic to the next, either backwards or forwards. Now, if I was on change client ID field type, and we went back to the fee file, and then we wanted to go back to where we were, just like in a web browser, forward takes us there. Um, refresh, Home, Website, KB. These are interesting buttons to have, but I can't think of any reason to use them. Now, that's one way to get help. Context sensitive help. Yellow question mark. Another way is to go straight into help. And when you go straight into help, and then into help topics, you go into that same place, but the assumption is you want to go and look up something. You're not on the screen that you want to check. You're actually going to go in to look at something. Now, the first thing that you see on the left is the table of contents. So everything is ordered, ordered into chapters and subchapters and, 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 and sections within chap subchapters. So if you want to learn about the calendar and you're specifically interested in calendar codes, here are four topics specific to calendar codes. That's what contents is. Some people like to look at things like they were a book. And contents is going to do that for us. It's going to give us a nice, organized way to go through. And if you were to go through all these help sections, you would be, would be almost like reading the manual. One of the next things over is index. Let's say that we want, I, as many of you know, I am very much into uh, shortcuts, uh, keyboard shortcuts to do the things that you would normally do with this a damn newfangled mouse thing that they came up with about 20 years ago. I'm very old. And so I like to go into shortcuts and see what all those shortcuts are. So if I am in index, it's like looking at the in index in the back of the manual. If I type keyboard and the word keyboard has been indexed, then it's going to show up here. The difference between that and search is search will search for the word keyboard in any help article. So it's going to find articles that weren't even indexed, um, simply articles that have the word keyboard in them. So there you go. That's the difference between search and index. And then if you really like a particular help topic, let's say you find keyboard and shortcuts, and you say, oh, this is me. This is perfect. You can add it to your favorites, just like you would in Internet Explorer or Chrome or Firefox or Mozilla. I hope I didn't miss one. And therefore, you can come back into help and always be able to go straight back to that page. So once you find something that's particularly relevant to you and that you think you'll want to reference over and over again, shortcut it, add it to the shortcuts, and then it's available here on your favorites. Now, there's a couple other things that you'll find under help. Um, once I show you this, 
you may never hesitate to stop that annoying, the newsletter is out, do you want to read it yet message. A lot of people just say, remind me later, remind me later, remind me later, remind me later. Well, maybe that's because they don't know that they can get here by going to help, internet resources, user newsletter. And then it's going to take them straight to the newsletter. So they don't need that link that shows up in that thing that comes up at the beginning of uh, loading the software starting on the 15th. Um, they can get there straight through here. Another thing that we have that's very helpful is the knowledge base. Now, Mary Jo and I spend, and Daniel, spend a lot of time here. Oh, yeah, I got a funky Java thing going on in here. I forgot about that. Uh, we are on a new desktop, and we have a Java issue when we go to support through Google Chrome. So I'm going to go through Internet Explorer and just keep in mind this is where you would end up if you click that button uh, and your default browser didn't freak out on you when it took you there. It is, and you can get there just by typing support.tabs3.com. This, this is the knowledge base. <laughs> we don't have the right version of Java. Okay, third time is going to be a charm. I'm going out to my local desktop. I'm going to type support. Boy, Mary Jo, the excitement of live TV, it's just too too exciting for us. <laughs> Did I say that the third time was going to be a charm? Okay. This is, uh, what is it in California? Three strikes, you're out. I guess I would be in jail for the rest of my life if this happened in California. Support.tabs3.com. Oh, come on. Apparently, I've typed something wrong. Mary Jo, do you know any um, lawyer jokes that you can keep everybody entertained with? Tabs 3 dot com. <sighs> hey, Paul, I can share something. You can share something. Leanne is going to share something. Leanne? Uh, Rachel had a good idea when you were talking about bookmarking things mm -hmm. and health topics. She said bookmarking the error code sounds like a good idea. Ah, that is a good idea. Very good, Rachel. Ten points. Um, that would that would be an excellent one. Mary Jo is nodding over here because she's who we send everybody to when they get those zero codes. <laughs> now, um, this is the knowledge base. You'll notice it looks a little bit like help. We do have some topics over here, but most important to remember is that you can search here and you can search here. Same thing. You put words in here. You put words in here you will get KB articles. Sometimes I or Mary Jo or Daniel or somebody at SCI will tell you to go to a specific article, like, well, I hope the example they have here is an active article. Yeah, I guess it is. Uh, you type in the article number, and this is article R10200. Okay? Now, these articles talk about all sorts of different things. One of the ones I work with a lot is um, ODBC which is just a nerd way to say getting to your data, and I spelled it wrong, ODBC, and working with ODBC. So here's an article specifically on how to install the ODBC drivers. I am always coming here and pulling this up when I'm at client sites to get the screen settings that I need to do that. Very, very helpful. If you know what you're looking for, great place to go to find it. If you have a specific article, great place to go. A lot of times Mary Jo and I will send you here. Uh, when we have our year-end uh, meeting uh, where we talk about year-end things, we give you a whole bunch of articles that you can pull up that tell you what to do for year-end and trust and billing and, 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 and all those things. Uh, this is the place to get them. A couple other things that you have available to you in help. We have, um, this is where you update the software. We're not going to talk about that. That's, that has to do with, it uh, doesn't have to do so much with help. Training videos. Training videos, uh, there are quite a few of them. What, maybe even a hundred of them, Mary Jo? Quite a few of these. All sorts of different topics. Um, click on one of the topics. You may get a message about needing to install an ActiveX control. You may get a message about needing not Java, Mary Jo, but Flash. Flash is what these are written in. But gives you a whole list of different topics, different uh, different things that you can watch, how long they are, just click the links, and it's it's basically like, like training that's built right into the software. One other thing to remember is 
some of the topics have their own training videos. So for instance, if we go back here to journal, I think is what I had going for me. Thank you, Mary Jo. And then we'll bring this up. Oh, journal file over. There we go. They have a little icon that looks like an old-fashioned movie projector. I, I think that's what it looks like. And if you click that, it'll take you to a training video specific to this topic. Another thing you'll find here is that some of these topics have quick guides where you can just load up a PDF-based uh, document that tells you specifics about that help topic. So here is a quick guide specific to journaling in Practice Master. And it pulls it up in whatever PDF viewer you have, and bam, there you are. Now, I think that's everything. Am I missing anything, Mary Jo? Okay. That is help. You can get there context-sensitive-wise through one of these yellow question marks. You can go straight into it here. We also have the training videos, and the Internet resources give us access to the new user newsletter um, and the knowledge base. Any questions, Sam? Yes, there is a question from Sharon. And the question is, are there training videos for creating invoice statement templates? In tabs, yes, there is. So if you go into tabs and go into help within tabs, keep in mind you're getting help in whatever package you're needing help on. And I'll maybe search for... Did she say templates, Lynn? Yeah. Right there. And there it is. Training video right there on how to create statement templates. Very, very useful. Very, uh, very comprehensive. Um, I, I don't think I've, you know, if, if anyone has ever gone into help in Excel or Word, it, for me it's Excel. Um, if anybody's ever gone into help in Excel, and tried to find something, it's, it's almost impossible to find exactly what you're looking for. You may find a million things that do other things, but uh, here I, I always have success looking for something in help. I, I find it to be very, very user-friendly and very comprehensive. Okay, now Mary Jo is going to... Ah. Um, one thing I just want to add to Paul on the, on the screen, just to make you aware, these little buttons here, are actually drill downs as well. Sometimes you'll get screens like that where it's got the general, and they match up to whatever screen you're on. So there's the fee, and that's going to take you to page-specific help for that particular tab. Ah, yes. So that's just an additional. I know he talked about the underline and the, the dash lines, but they also sometimes have those little tabs for you to click on and take you into the template design. We'll talk about that, Sharon, but there's other, all, there's other screens that have that as well, so be aware if there's tabs. Yep. Anyone that's got the any screen that's got the tabs like that is almost invariably going to have that in help. Very good. Well, speaking of template design, Mary Jo is going to deal a little more with layout uh, designer, but Mary Jo is going to talk about images and layout designer. Go ahead, Mary Jo. Okay. A lot of times um, I have clients that want to um, change the way that their their templates look or their statements look at the top, or maybe they've had a design at the top forever and ever and ever because it came over from older versions before we had statement designer. So they want to maybe um, add an attorney or change their phone number or something like that, and they're not exactly sure how to do that. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of places where that's located, first of all, and then also how to make it real fancy. I mean, adding import, um, importing images. Um, a lot of times you have your letterhead on an image that you send to the printer, and it could be in a JPEG or a bitmap or a PNG file, and you've got that stored. Well, you can import that image and create your statement with that actual letterhead that you use for everything else. So there's a lot of things that you can do in Statement Designer that has come a long way. And I'm not exactly sure which version um, they added that in, but I know there's a lot of people that have had statements prior to version 12, and they've been just doing it in customization. And they're very limited on what they can do. 
So for now, the first thing that I would say to find out what layout you're actually using, we need to start with a template because every single template that you create can have a layout assigned to it. So if we come into statement templates, and I'm just going to use our final statement, you may have draft, you may have contingent, you may have all kinds of different you know, templates designed in here, but usually the one with the D is your draft statement that you're using for the default, and the F is the final that you're using for the default. Now you may have these assigned to clients that are different, but these are the main ones that you're using. So I would start there, um, and then just realize if there's other templates, you would have to change the design for each one. Um, but let's just go into our final template for just a minute so I can show you um, on this layout tab, this would tell you what template um, or what statement template that you're using for this particular billing template up here. So right now I can see that the ACS invoice page one and the ACS invoices page two is my default final statement template. So that's the one that I'm going to look at when I come back into statement setup to my statement designer. I'm going to want to find that template so that that's the one I'm modifying. So here's my ACS invoices templates right here. If I do the little plus sign, here's my page one, two cover statement and envelope. Now, usually when you come in, it's on this default firm information, and that's what I'm looking at here. Um, so if you change something here and you're not using firm information on your statement layout um, or template, it's not going to, those changes won't carry over. So there's a couple of places to change when you're coming in to do this, so be careful with that. Um, so here's my layout group that I have. I'm going to go to my page one, and you'll see here that we've got an image um, of our letterhead and then how we want our statements to look. And then down at the bottom for my footer, that's where I could also put my credit card statement and things like that. And we have one over that in some other sessions, and we may go into more detail with adding other um, features to your statement or your cover statement or your page one or page two. But for now, I want to show you how you can just modify this top section. So if I went back into my firm information, just my sample layout, you can see it's pretty generic. It's getting the firm name, the address, and you'll see it's got the little at symbol in front of it. And what that means is it's taking this information. This is a field that's pre-filled in over in system configuration under the little scales, whatever you put in there for your firm name, that's where this is pulling that from. So whatever information is there, if you wanted to just keep your template and you just wanted to change that, you need to change it over in system config, and then that will automatically populate that into the statement header. I've also got some other fields here, and these are all coming from down here on the, on the left here where you've got your little tree. I can see here's my firm fields, and again, here's your firm name and address, all those things, um, the email, fax, this is all as defined in system configuration. And then I've got my system fields. There's just my page number, statement number, my dates, all of that. That's going to pull from when I actually do my statements. And then we've got statement customization fields. These are coming from the statement customization. And I have a lot of clients that are still using these heading fields, and that's what's populating over here. And I'll show you where that is, too, in just a moment. And then you've got your bill to fields. This is where you're going to fill in this name and address, this, um, you know, work description, things like that, attention lines. Um, this is all the address of what you've got defined in the client. And then you've also got your client fields. And again, this is where the work description and things like that would come, miscellaneous one, two, and three lines. And you can insert these by just highlighting it, double-clicking it, or you can um, you know, to add it. Um, there's all kinds of ways to just put this um, information over here um, into the, to the actual template. If I wanted to add a field up here, you can add a text box. Maybe I want something like over here, the statement date, the statement number, and the account number right here are actually text boxes in front of the actual fields that we're pulling from. So you might want to add, um, instead of having it automatically populate the firm facts, you might just want that hard-coded in with just a text box. So I could add that text box, put it underneath here, and then I can modify it and just put the, the phone number that I want in there or the fax number I want in there. So there's all kinds of different things to do to add fields. You can add lines, boxes, things like that. So you can make these statements look a little nicer. So I'm going to remove this. If I wanted to, before I do that, let's say I wanted to modify this text box. If I right click on here and go to properties, I get a, a box over here for my text box properties. There is where I can change whether I want this to be centered 
Um, right now it's to the left. I can change it and say I want my text to be centered. I can change the vertical alignment. I can make it bold if I want to or italicized. I can change the font and the font size. Uh, underline, all of these things here I can change um, with that properties box. The other thing you'll notice that is on different boxes or different fields, um, they have different properties. So I'm going to go back down to our page one for ACS, and if I right-clicked on this image box and go to my properties, I have a different set of um, things that I can do. Obviously, in an image, there's no font size or anything like that, but I can still change um, some information here. Now, how do I get an image in here? There is an image import here to add an image. So I'm going to go back up to our sample so that I don't mess with ours. And I'm just going to click on Add an Image. And it's going to navigate out. So the, the key that you want to do, though, when adding an image is make sure that the image is stored in the STI folder. And the reason we want to do that is because that is assess accessible from everybody in the firm. Um, if I had the image stored on my desktop and I import it in here, it's not importing it into this particular um, document that everybody's going to see, this statement. It's putting it um, for my screen. I'd be able to see it because it's on my C drive. But everybody else would not be able to see that image because it would have an X and it, they don't have access to my C drive. So we need to make sure that that image is in the STI folder. And you can just save it in here. You can see we've got some images in here now. Um, of some different things. Um, and you can just go ahead and save it there and then add it. And then everybody will have access when they print statements, because you may not be the only person printing statements in the firm. So just make sure your image is out there. You would choose your image, and then you can go ahead and put it in, and you can stretch it out, do whatever you want to do there. Now, for our image down here, you'll notice that it kind of looks funny here. Um, I don't know if you guys see that on your end, but on my screen, it's not quite a clear image. But when it prints, it is. And um, you can resize it. You can adjust to however you want up here. If you already have a statement that has an image in there and it needs to be changed, sometimes I'll have clients that need to add or remove attorneys, and they can't click on this because it's an image. You have to remove it and obviously replace it with your current letterhead. And that would just be you know, right-clicking, deleting, and then adding the image. The other thing for images is it only takes three types of files. You can only do a JPEG, a bitmap, or a PNG file. So if you've got a GIF or you know some other type of image, you have to make sure it's in one of those formats and then saved in the STI folder. And then you can go ahead and import it in. And it's just browsing out there, choosing it, and populating your, um, your header with that. Or your footer. I know we've got one in our footer as well. You can put images anywhere you want. So you can see we've got our um, leading provider of tabs three here at the bottom. That's just another image that we've just put down here underneath the end of the body, which will mean it will be in the footer. So that's how you can put an image in there. And this could be on page two as well if you wanted to carry that over. Um, and again, each template that you're using, you'll need to make sure that you change it. So you can see we've got a PEP statements, we've got tests, um, we've got all kinds of things. Um, and if you were using any of these other um, test uh, sample layouts, you know, you'd have to go into that specific one and change all of those that you could possibly be using. Once you've done that, um, you then have that available out there for you when you um, do your statement. The place that I was going to show you, if you're using the customization, some of you might have under statement customization this headings column. And see how we've got attorney computer systems and all this stuff that's all put in there as a heading. And a lot of times, Clients will have this as their default. And then when they're using those statement templates over in Statement Designer, or maybe they're not even using Statement Designer, it's just pulling it from this heading. So when you have to change things, you come into this screen, and then you change the information here. Again, it's just very limited. You can see I can't really change a whole lot of things here. I might be able to bold it or italicize it. But as far as sizing it and doing some things here, it's very, very limited, whereas in Statement Designer, I'm free to do just about anything that I want, um, moving things around. You know, I can lasso fields. I can um, move them up or down, delete them, change them, change my properties, change my fonts very easily. Um, so that's, in a nutshell, some of our statement designer. Um, it, as you can see, it can get quite involved. And um, you know, but it is 
easy to use, and um, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it makes your statements look very nice, and you, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Any questions, Leanne? Actually, there is a question. Rachel wanted to confirm that there is no way to include the statement numbers for individual matters on the cover sheet. Is that true? Individual state, statement numbers for, well, are you, if she's combining statements, you know, all into one, that's going to be one statement number. So. Oh, no, she's not doing that. Not combining. No, the cover statement would have, um, there is a way to put the matter in front of it, um, but not the actual statement number if it's different. Okay. Other questions? And if that didn't answer, um, is that Rachel? You, you can give me a call. Maybe we can look at it a little bit closer. But Okay, no other questions, though. Okay, a couple quick announcements. We uh, would love to have everybody here send us an email with a suggestion of a topic that they would like to see at the water cooler. Because Mary Jo and I uh, put our heads together every month and d decide what we're going to cover the next month. And a lot of times it's it's hard um, because we we really would like to know what you would like to hear us talk about. So send an email to us, paul.purdue at attorneycomputersystems.com. Just let us know something that you'd like to see covered, and, and you might just find it in the next water cooler. Uh, you won't find it in the next water cooler, though, because we've already picked those topics. Next, uh, next month we're going to talk about period versus date-based reports. There are some reports, not many of them, but some reports in tabs 3 that are still period-based. Uh, those are the reports that depend on advancing the month in tabs, whereas all the other reports at this point are date-based. Um, so we're going to take a good close look at that. What are the differences? Why does it matter? Why might that cause certain numbers not to match up between the two sets of reports? And we're also going to look, as long as we're comparing things, at the difference between using client funds and using trust accounting. Uh, two things that do similar functionality, but in very different ways, so we're going to take a very close look at that. I also wanted to let everybody know that uh, our next water cooler, May's water cooler, will be a week early because of the last Monday of the month, which is traditionally when we hold them. And I always get this wrong. Is it Memorial Day or Labor Day? Okay, it's Memorial Day. I can never remember which one's at the beginning of the summer and which one's at the end. I just know that there's summer in between. So next month, Memorial Day is the last Monday of the month. So our water core our virtual user group meeting will be a week early. And also, uh, we are going to have a, a webinar coming up. And uh, it's, it's going to be on a, a, a topic uh, near and dear to a lot of people. So it's how to get time into tabs uh, using uh, an iPad, an iPhone, an Android device, or an Android tablet, uh, or anything that's got the web on it. We're going to talk about a new product from a company called Bellfield. Uh, it's a, an iPad app, iPhone app that is also available in a browser version, so you can run it on an Android or on a, a, a virtually anything, a Nook, any sort of tablet, any sort of web-enabled device that keeps track of time and puts it in tabs. And a very simple, very very uh, well-designed piece of software, very simple in nature, very simple in scope, and we're going to take a look at that. So uh, that's what we've got for this week. Uh, everybody have a good afternoon and try to avoid. <laughs> Pressing the button with the, uh, what is she, the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. Uh -huh. So everybody have a good afternoon and a good week and a good month, and we'll see you next month. Thanks. Bye-bye.